Cruising on the water continues to be a traveler's delight anywhere in the world. Whether it be in the crystal clear lake, serpentine backwaters, or the vast expanse of the deep blue seas. What is alarming is that the incidents of water tragedies are also on the rise, making such cruises a tourist nightmare in a split second. The latest tragedy was the capsizing of a double-deck fiber boat in a picturesque freshwater lake nestled in the National Tiger Reserve of Thakadi, Kerala. What started as an enchanting cruise along the lake turned out to be a watery grave for 46 tourists, including 15 children. There were parents who lost their kids, newlyweds who lost their partners, and children who became orphans. According to the survivors, boat capsized while maneuvering a turn in the deep waters. There are several versions about the cause of the tragedy. The most probable theory goes like this. Tourists boarding the boat. Boat cruising smoothly over the lake. Someone shouted from the upper deck after spotting some wild elephants. Others from the lower deck crowding and concentrating on one side to have the first glimpse of the wild elephants. The boat driver takes a turn. As a result, the boat loses its balance and capsizes. Hapless victims fall into the water and struggle for life. Many are still trapped in the lower deck. Rescue operations are on. Is this just a human error, or was it overcrowding of tourists on the upper deck, or a sudden spur of wind that caused the tragedy? There are some crucial questions that need answers in the case of tragedies involving boats of any kind. Was there something basically wrong with the design of the boat itself? Was the boat in good condition? Was the boat suited for this kind of a cruise? Was there something technically wrong with the boat? Were the rules and regulations followed? The regulatory authorities in India have set up many rules and regulations for a safe boat trip. Are these regulations followed or updated? Let's see what the experts have to say. All the seagoing and uh, inland going vessels are to be classified into different groups. Those go to the sea are to be uh, accepted by the MMD, Mercantile Marine Act and those uh, who are going into the navigational channels and rivers in Kerala are to be obeyed by the IV Act, Inland Vessel Act. Unfortunately, in Kerala, we have been still, uh, till recently, following the old Travangar Kuchin Canals Act of 1902 and 1906. The boat capsizing incident has shaken the state tourism. Many questions have been raised on the insurance aspect of the boat. Why didn't the authorities take necessary steps to ensure that the boat had been properly insured? Or is it that there is no insurance needed at all? Tourism has broken traditional barriers by introducing fiber boats instead of the traditional boats, which have been drifting in the backwaters for many long years. The rules and regulations of the bygone time have definitely affected the boating scenario. Let's hear another perspective of this tragedy by our expert. It's a total system failure due to ignorance from top to bottom. How can you complete the registration process without insurance? It's a shocking thing that a vessel is running without insurance. Who is responsible uh, for paying the compensation? As per Airlines Convention or MS Act, 
the owner is responsible to pay the entire compensation. Unfortunately, the MS Act uh, says only to pay rupees hundred thousand. This is nothing. It was made in 1958. Again, you still follow those rules, and it was made for the sea. And this is a totally different situation. It's a calm water. Basically, it's a lake. We need to have some latest rules, regulations for the inland navigation. But which rule we will follow? We need to adapt something suitable for our waters. If we don't do that one, we will try to import some rules from abroad or some other uh, system, and it will never ever suit with the traditional boat building and traditional boats of this state, and it will be the end of the tourism of this state. This state attracts the tourists just because of the beauty of the backwaters and the traditional boats. And the traditional boat building is totally different with the modern ship building. Traditional boats they have never reported any capsize due to stability. Yeah, especially the house boats, it has never capsized because of lack of stability. So, how can you conduct a stability test on a house boat as per international rules? Absolutely not possible. We need to draft something, a new system to ensure the stability part, so that the insurance people will have some kind of supporting documents. We should understand the role of classification society uh, in any vessel. The classification society makes sure the uh, hull and machinery part, everything is perfect, so that the vessel can be insured accordingly. Here, uh, the class is in the picture, but uh, uh, since the vessel is less than 24 meters, they don't have any responsibility. Uh, on the stability part as per the existing rules. Certified by third party as per the rules does not mean that the boat is 100% safe for operation as most of these rules are now outdated. The role of a third party is limited to check the boat as per existing rules. Even though we have rules updated internationally, it was not implemented till date in our country for inland pleasure vessels. Let's see what a naval architect has to say on this. I would like to give an explanation of what has happened after my first visit to the site. I could find out was the vessel was having a, a, a list towards the starboard side around 2.9 degrees. So this list I wanted to substantiate with in presence of the IRS classification society and also the design to conduct a joint survey. Uh, with IRS surveyor and um, uh, the designer. So we did uh, the survey on 14th and uh, there was some water inside uh, the tank so we emptied it and uh, cleared the whole, whole, whole boat and then finally we took the inclination the inclination was uh, the, the angle of list was at 2.1 degree towards the starboard side. So, to, to, in order to conduct the inclining experiment, we had to bring back the vessel to even keel condition, that is zero angle of list. We put uh, uh, human weights, uh, 310 kilograms on the port side of the vessel and the vessel was brought to even keel condition. Now, after that we conducted the inclining experiment with uh, uh, bags of 31 kilos each. Four bags were uh, placed on one side and four bags were placed on the other side. The normal course of conducting the inclining experiment, we conducted it in presence of the designer and also the classification society surveyor. This vessel, if the boat is loaded with 75 passengers and also extra 15 passengers, the angle of uh, heel to one side will be 14 degrees. So that means the vessel is also already having an inherent uh, heel of 2 degrees. So the total heel will come to 16 degrees. In such a situation, uh, a person will lose the balance and the people sitting on one side will suddenly come to, uh, will fall to the uh, other side. That means from port side to starboard, all the people will be falling. And due to this fall, there will be a big momentum will be produced. And this momentum will overturn, turtle the vessel 180 degrees. A boat, irrespective of the material used, needs to meet the requirements with respect to strength, stability, safety and performance. It is a common practice worldwide to use steel, aluminum, fiberglass or wood as boat building material. The usage of FRP also known as fiber reinforced plastic 
does not mean that the material is light and the boat made of this material 